Section 3.1 deals with measures of central tendency. Now, what does that mean? Well, in statistics, we're very concerned about sets of data, sets of observations. And one of the first things you want to know about a data set is where is the center? Where is the middle? What's the average? I mean, when you think about it, you get a test back in a class. What's the first thing that comes out of your mouth? Once you have the paper sitting in your hand and you know your own score is what was the average? Why do you want to know that? Well, because you want to know where the center was, so you know if you were above it or below it. Okay, so when people think of average, quote unquote, the word average, what they're really thinking of usually is something called the arithmetic mean. That is computed when, by adding up all the possible values of the data set and then dividing by the a number of observations, right? Not all the possible, but all the values in the data set. Um, technically, average is a more generic term than this. Average actually means any measure of center, but um, a lot of times people use it to be synonymous with this. So how do you find this? Well, I'm sure you found this before in your life. What it means is you add up all of the values and you divide by how many there were. So if you look at the formula right here, capital sigma means you're gonna add. What are you gonna add up? X, and the little i just means you know X number one, X number two, X number three. So you're gonna add up all your different observations and you're gonna divide by capital N, which is your population size. If you do that, you get this Greek letter right here, which is mu. MU is how we write it in English, but it's the Greek letter mu. If you're ever in Greece, it makes the M mm sound, right? Like little, it's their lowercase m, if you will. So mu is the population mean. So if you knew all the values in the entire population, you could find the population mean by adding up the values and dividing by the population size. Of course, most of the time we don't actually know all the values in the entire population, so we use a sample. Right? And so we add up all the values in our sample here, and we divide by our sample size. That doesn't give us mu because it's only a sample. It gives us x bar. x because it's the letter x, but bar because it has a little bar on its head. That's x bar. That is the sample mean. Now, keep in mind what's happening here. Population mean is only known if you know everything about the population. You have to know all the individuals. So that's a parameter because it's for the population. It's a constant value. You just don't often know what it is, right? It's usually unknown. Whereas the sample statistic, right, X bar, is from a subset of the population, so you know what that value is, but it varies from sample to sample to sample. So for example, let's say I wanted to know the average height of all NBA players. That would be a parameter, the average height, the mu of all NBA players. But I can't go grab every single NBA player, so what I'll do is I'll go to my local team, the Detroit Pistons, and I'll measure all of them and get their average. Right Now if I went to a different team like the Miami Heat, then that would be a different average as well. And so it depends on which team I'm looking at what my X bar is going to be. Right. Okay, so suppose you're interested in the average body temperature of all humans, the average human body temperature. What would be the difference between mu and X bar in relation to that sample? So the average body temperature for all humans on the planet is mu, right? So this is a constant value, but you don't really know what it is. Right? You cannot go put a thermometer here, unknown, because we cannot put a thermometer in every single person, right? I think you'd run into trouble. I mean, for starters, for so many reasons, you wouldn't be able to keep up, right? Because people are dying and people are giving birth and things are happening all the time and et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. But that and a lot of people, if you walk up to them with a thermometer and you say, let me put your, you know, test your temperature, they're probably going to um, not take kindly to that. But what you could do is a sample. So you could get a random sample of people that are willing to have their temperature taken, and you get that sample, and that would give you an X bar, a sample, a mean. Okay, so this is the sample mean, oopsie, sample mean, and this is the population mean. There we go. All right, now, what do we have to say about the two of them? Mu and X bar will not be the same. Right? They won't because this is for everybody on the entire planet and this is just for this group of people you got.
but they should be close. Hmm. Oops. Sorry about that. As long as you took a random unbiased sample. Very important to do. Um, it's not always done in research, but um, it's something to strive for. And we will, for the most part, assume that it was done in this course. All right, now the difference between mu and x bar, the fact that they're not um, the same, but they should be close to each other, that becomes very important in chapters 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, and so on. Because what do I mean by should? What is should exactly? i.e. probability, confidence, that kind of thing. And what is close? How close, right? That's what the margin of error is about. So we'll talk about that in later chapters. Okay, so now we're going to find um, how find out how many pets each person in our class has. So I have here, a, this is from a different class that I had. Let me zoom out so you can see all the numbers on the screen at the same time. So I had a class a while ago, and this was the number of pets that they had in that class. Sorry, it's a little small. So now we are going to take this data set, and we are going to find the average of it down here. Compute the mean using our calculator. All right, then. So I'm going to grab the calculator. Here it is. And this is going to be a technique you're going to use throughout the course, stat edit. So you stat, because the name of the course is statistics, press that. And edit is number one. So you can either press enter because it's already highlighted. See how the cursor is already there? See it? See how it's dark right there on number one? Or the menu system and TID4s are hot keys, so you can just press one. Now I have some old data here that I don't want, so I'm going to go up and press clear, enter, and that cleared out list three. Then I use my left arrow, go up, clear, enter. There's list two is cleared out. Those are L's, by the way, L for list. And go up, press clear, enter. Of course, if no data has ever been entered in yours, then you don't have to worry about that until the next problem because you'll always have to know how to clear out your calculator. So you go up, press clear, enter. And then you just start typing in the numbers and pressing enter after each one. And there we go. And it's going to take a minute to catch up. One sec. And there we have it. Oops. Now one thing you might want to notice here, let me make this smaller one second. There we go. Now you can see down here it's saying it's list one number 33. So it's letting you know it's blank on the 33rd entry, which if we look back at our table, that's exactly what we want. We want it to be blank on the 33rd entry. Also keep in mind here that I put this into a few columns because it was such a large table, I wouldn't get it to fit on one page otherwise. So I had to kind of split the table into two columns, or well, actually four columns for that matter. But the only thing that's really relevant to us is the number of pets, and that's a single column value. So all I really need is the one, the three, one, zero, and so on. All right, so I have that data set, and then I have to find the mean. So I press stat. Now edit was where we edited. Um, those lists put that data in so we want to go to the right to calculate and number one is the one we want one variable statistics so press number one it's saying what's your list well my list is l1 if it's not l1 for you you press second one because if you look above your l above your number one button there's a little l1 there so since mine is blue i'd have to hit the blue button to make that happen we're going to leave the frequency list blank for now. That will change a little bit later in this chapter. But we're going to leave the frequency list blank. And if it's not blank, press clear to make it blank. And then go down to calculate and press enter. And there's the mean right at the top. That's the first thing. See, x bar. Now, before we even do this, we should answer the question, is this a population mean or is this a sample mean? Well, it's a sample mean because our class is a sample of all JC students, for example, or all statistics college students, or whatever. Pick your poison. So we're going to say it's a sample mean, which means it's x bar. So you have to draw or write an x with a little bar over it, and it's 2.3125. Now, if you really felt like it, of course, you could add all these up and divide by how many there were. But the point is that that's quite a tricky calculation with a calculator to make sure you typed every number correctly. 
This way, you type the numbers correctly one time and look at all the information it gives you. I press the down arrow and it's giving me all this laundry list of stuff, most of which we will actually be using in this chapter, chapter three, because chapter three is all about basic statistics of a data set, which is why this is called one variable stats statistics. And there's the instructions for that. Okay, the next thing to know about the mean is that the mean is frequently not a value from the data set itself. For example, if we look at our data set back here, nobody had 2.3125 pets. You can't have 2.3 of a pet. Either you have two pets or you have three pets because pets is discrete, right? What we learned in chapter section 1.1. So you can't have 2.3 pets, and often that's going to be the case. The mean is frequently not a value from the data set itself. It's impossible to have 2.3 pets. Also good to know is that the mean is a balance point for your data set. So if you imagine your dot plot, um, a data plot or a dot plot of your data, let me put it that way, then the mean is where the data set perfectly balances like the fulcrum of a seesaw or a teeter-totter or a lever of whichever kind, or a lever if that's the way you choose to pronounce it, right? So if this horizontal axis right here is a lever, the place you put the fulcrum to get the, to balance, right, perfectly balanced on both sides would be the mean. So this particular dot plot I have right here is the number of representatives in the U.S. per state or by state. So there are 435 representatives, in case you wanted to know in case you took a civics class, and there are 50 states. Oops, hold on, let me get that out of my screen. There we go. So that means the mean, is 435 over 50, which is, so let me get out of this screen, I'm just gonna press clear, and then it goes away. Basically, it's the output that I just had. You're not really leaving the screen that was on the home screen, but it's okay. There you go. 435 divided by 50 is 8.7. Right there. All right, so that means that the fulcrum for this would be at 8.7. Let me draw that. One second. There we have it. So there's the mean right there. Here's 10, here's 9, here's 8, so it's kind of a little bit to the right on that halfway point in between eight and nine. Beautiful. So if I put the fulcrum right there at 8.7, this side over on the left and this side way over here on the right would perfectly balance. Now let's expand that idea for this problem. So I have the means here for the following graphs are 4.94 and 2.88, which is which? So you want to look for where the balance point would be for these two graphs. So let's imagine for just a second that we took 4.94 and put that as the balance point. Let me grab this arrow and put it down there. So if you put an arrow right here at 4.94, that's almost five right there. Oopsie, there. Would this lump over here balance out with this little bitty tail over here? And the answer is no, there's no way that would work, right? So it has to be over here somewhere. Now, you might be thinking, well, how did that work up here on this one up here where it had the big lump over here on the left? Well, that's because this one has a super long right tail because California is way over here. California and New York and Texas and those states are really causing this graph to be very right skewed. And that's why um, those points, since they're so far out, can balance with such a big clump right there. So let me write out the answer to that one. So this one's 2.988, and this one down here has got to be 4.94. You can see it. See how it's kind of near where that tallest bit is, and then this tail over here is balancing out with this bit over here. So let me write that up. There we go. So a mean of 4.98 would be way too lopsided. There's no way the little tiny bit, if you remember it's over here, that little bit over here could balance that huge clump over there. If it's at 2.88, however, it balances a nice good half of the clump with a nice good long tail. Similarly, the same argument works down here with 2.88, right? 2.88 would be way too small. It'd be over here. So it's actually over here at 4.98, where the clump on the half, a uh, half clump would balance with that large tail. 